Okay, so this week I'm going to be breaking this up into three different lectures, which are all going to comprise weeks one. Um, and the first, uh, well, generally all of them are going to be about the fundamentals of infectious disease epidemiology. So I'm going to give you some basics of why infectious disease epidemiology is different from the quote classic epidemiology, the traditional epidemiology. Uh, and then we're going to talk about, um, give you some, um, some vocabulary and talk about some specific aspects of, of ID. And, and really, it's going to be a lot of vocabulary and introducing some, some new concepts that we're going to be referring to over the course of the course. <clears throat> so here we go. This is the first of the three-part series. So uh, I've already talked about this. I'm going to talk about infectious disease epidemiology versus classic epidemiology. I'm going to talk about different approaches to infectious disease epidemiology ways to quantify infectious diseases, and then I'm going to give you some other terminology. So the first thing I want to talk about today is infectious disease epidemiology versus the quote, classical epidemiology. So classical epidemiology, like a lot of disciplines, um, including economics, tend to focus on the individual and the individual as an endpoint. Um, we normally talk about people, individuals being exposed to something, and then disease occurs. So when you're exposed to whatever, you become a case. So for example, uh, you get exposed to, uh, for example, HIV, and then you become a case, an HIV case, for example. But in terms of infectious disease epidemiology, the case itself becomes an exposure because every person or living thing, organism or whatever, whichever pathogen we're going to talk about, um, has a potential of being infected upon contact with that individual. So it's different in the sense that ex exposure leads to cases, but cases themselves become exposures and they create new cases. So this is really, you know, the, the, the main sort of nuance of infectious disease epidemiology. We're not just talking about people as an endpoint, we're talking about people as a beginning as well. So we're going to see over the course of the term, other implications of this, you know, for example, like when we get to the section on transmission dynamics and modeling, we're going to see this a lot because it, it very much informs how we approach modeling disease and disease transmission. It changes everything. So we're going to talk a little bit about, little bit about this right now. So one thing is that in the difference between ID epidemiology and classic epidemiology is that sub clinical and fully asymptomatic infections can influence the epidemiology. So we're not just talking about simply about people who are coughing or are sick. You know, we also have people who are not showing any signs of disease, but are still influencing transmission dynamics. They're able to transmit themselves. Um, we see this with a lot of disease. You know, some percentage will be asymptomatic, but in many cases, they're able to transmit. So HIV is one of these. For example, uh, when a person is infected with HIV, um, it can often be several years before they experience symptoms, but during that five years, they're, they're able to transmit. And so without a test, they really have no idea that they're infected and then are going about happily transmitting during that time. Symptoms themselves can change behaviors uh, so that people stay home when they're feverish, reducing the chances of passing, for example, influenza onto others. Um, you know, especially with HIV, you know, a person with symptomatic HIV is, is less likely to engage in the behaviors that would transmit HIV. Um, so this would change the transmission dynamics in that case. Uh, when there are people have no symptoms, people do not know they're infectious, and so they go about their daily routines and they're exposing others. So this is, you know, one thing we're seeing with COVID-19 is that there are asymptomatic cases out there, and uh, it's, they have the potential to be transmitting the whole time, and without 
of presumptively isolating oneself upon potential exposure, we risk the potential of, of passing it on to others and furthering transmission. Contact patterns. So in ID epidemiology, um, as opposed to classic epidemiology, the nature of contacts between uh, cases and, and as yet to become cases, non-cases, really matters uh, in terms of the transmission of pathogens. So pathogens cannot transmit from person to person without contact. Uh, and we're going to talk about different types of contact, indirect and direct contact, a little bit later. Um, but without a pathway to get from person to person, uh, there can be no, no transmission occurring. So more on the, op on the opposite side, more frequent and intense contact can increase opportunities for transmission. So for example, HIV and frequency of sexual contacts, a person who is very sexually active uh, and has multiple partners uh, within a short span of time will, 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 will be more likely to transmit to more people in that time. So behavior matters. The extremes, no contact uh, can halt transmission at the other extreme intense contact can, can make it worse. Immunity, and this is very important uh, in ID epidemiology, is the level of resistance of the host to infection. So immunity is in general, the body's ability to resist infection. And this changes the dynamics of transmission. Um, so host fitness, for example, uh, some people are more susceptible to some pathogens than others. Um, and this, this difference can, can impact uh, the, the nature of transmission within a population. As we said before, cases can become exposures so that if a person is resistant to infection, it can never become a case and thus can never become an exposure. So um, very important to ID is, is the nature of the host itself. And you know, with a lot of, of pathogens, we see that different things like age, uh, sometimes gender, um, previous exposure, uh, level of, of, of you know, health, health, health level is a person um, healthy or not, or compromised with with other types of ailments. All these things can impact uh, transmission, and thus uh, transmission to the host, and thus impact uh, transmission from the host to other people. So this is very Im in important um, in turn when we start talking about the differences between classic epidemiology or even chronic disease and infectious disease is infectious disease often leads to a sense of urgency. Um, we should do something right now in order to prevent future cases, cases in the future. Um, with chronic disease, you see this less so. I mean, obviously, things like, like obesity and heart disease are serious problems that need to be dealt with, for sure, yes. Um, but when we talk about chronic disease, we're usually talking about uh, interventions that take place over time or require sort of a buy-in of people to do things to, to lose weight or eat better so they don't become obese in the first place. And these things take time. But infectious diseases, uh, you know, like especially we saw with COVID-19, it appeared in January um, and then by March, uh, at least my state was completely shut down. Um, it's incredibly rapid. We were slower on the take than other countries for sure, um, but you know, much quicker to react than to something like um, smoking or obesity. An outbreak of a disease of, a, of, 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 of cases can necessitate a rapid response to prevent new infections um, because we don't want to create new exposures and thus new cases and so on and so on. So we're trying to sort of nip things in the bud before they get worse. Um, when you see, sometimes you'll ha find an outbreak of some sort of, of enteric disease and it will be uh, all tra traced to a source, like for example, a restaurant, and the, they might close down the restaurant for the time being um, to prevent future cases, for example.
I think COVID-19 is, is really the, the best example at this point. Okay, so that's the end of my first lecture on this. Um, I just wanted to talk about sort of, sort of these, these, these important differences between these two things. Um, what I want to do now is I'm going to move on to lecture two. Uh, and are going to give some some vocabulary and, and terminology that you'll need. So uh, thank you very much for watching this and we're going to move on.